Political correctness in film is in a place roughly for about 10 years. However, films are a tough time adjusting to political correctness in the way that it reacts to justifying it. Some people say it's because film has been primarily straight edge, and in some cases this can be true. For example, I'll be looking at Western film. Films have been made mainly in Hollywood and Europe, as I think it's easy to identify with them and will give you more examples for this purpose. Hollywood film quickly changed from the damsel in distress to a strong female character like Wonder Woman. And instead of te- stereotypes, with the small, quick eyed, quick talking Chinese people in films, we now have actual people with real stories and characters being developed. I'll start my video essay by talking about gender and how it's changed for the better, in my opinion. However, it still has underlying problems. I think the main question to ask currently in film is why are women being represented differently? Is it the underlying problem of society and how women are still regarded as inferior to men with the pay gap and different hours? Or is it that men simply think they're better than women and that women are inferior? Personally, I think it's the first. I think that specifically with older men, older generations, they find it hard to accept women and think that that men typically do a better job. I say this with inverted commas. An article by Abdullah Masood posted on Geeks gives an example of the Powerpuff Girls, who are asked in an episode, what other superheroes are there apart from them who are female? They go on to name Batgirl and Supergirl. However, the criminal in the the programme quickly brings them back and reminds them these are just female representations of male counterparts. However, I don't think this is a fair quote, as I think since Powerpuff Girls has been released, there's been a lot better representations of women. For example, which I mentioned earlier, Wonder Woman. If we look at Wonder Woman, we see a strong female character who basically doesn't like men. She's told on her island where she lives with only women that men aren't as good as her. I think this was a good representation for film and started to bring it on a bit further. However, Wonder Woman still had its problems. It wasn't a massive hit compared to what it should have been, but it also had the problem of keeping in a male sexual character and trying to create that relationship and that rapport between male and female. I personally don't think it needed this. I think it was an unfair thing to do. And I think there was a story there anyway without having to add a female-male relationship there. Secondly, in my video essay, I'm going to talk about race, which I think as a white Christian male has developed a lot. However, my culture has never suffered. So instead, I'm going to look at a film that in the last year came on leaps and bounds and really helped the film industry with the race problem, if it is a problem. The film I'll be looking at is Black Panther. Released in May, it was its first of its own, to have a majority black cast, which has not been seen in a major blockbuster film before. However, this takes on the Marvel Cineverse, which is a whole different fantasy universe, and just, you know discusses different things, and Black Panther is very much the same. However, Black Panther was more seen as a resistance. BBC critic claims it to be a resistance against um, white films. However, uh, director talks about how it will change black lives as an ethnic or white ethnic community and how it's going to really benefit young kids growing up. Political correctness in film has a long way to go. I think it's been helped by recent films in the last five years. However, I still think there's some room for improvement. I think specific pieces of media and projects that have been put out there are good. However, I think we also need to remember not to take everything personally. Music is one of the true forms of artistic expression with over 1,264 micro-genres that cater for every niche regardless of race, sex, ideologies or beliefs. The issue that results from this wide array of genres is censorship and political correctness. The American society and the mainstream music industry struggled with the race element of white v black throughout history. The white population became fearful of the African influence due to the xenophobia and racism rooted deep within society. By using Tyler the Creator as the focal point, we are able to explore the relationship of political correctness within the rap genre and we can see the issues regarding creative freedom and censorship. Tyler O'Connor, known as Tyler the Creator, is an American rapper and music producer who got his break in 2011 after Kanye West tweeted out one of his music videos, Yonkers. The video portrays Tyler in a unique, satanic way, explored through the minimalistic and dark mise-en-scene. In the video, we see Tyler eat a live cockroach, throw up, 
bleed from his nose, and in the end he ends up killing himself. This video juxtaposes the traditional popular conventions that we have grown accustomed to with rap music. The rap music videos are commonly used to convey the artist's wealth and idealistic lifestyles fantasized for younger men. The genre heavily objectifies women, only viewing them through the male gaze. Either the creator's lyrics in Yonkers can be considered aggressive, but compared to his other song, Tron Cat, it is quite tame. Victim, victim, honey, you're my fifth one. Honey on that topping when I stuff you in my system. Rape a pregnant bitch and tell my friends I had a threesome. You gotta. Which received huge backlash from many groups, such as the feminist group Collective Shout. The song was labelled misogynistic, homophobic, and extremely hateful. This song led to the travel ban in certain countries for Tyler. Amongst these are surprisingly the UK and Australia, two of the leading developed nations with a long history with freedom of speech and creative expression. Tyler has stated that it's satirical. Understandably, Tyler was branded a homophobe, coming under attack from many gay rights, charities and activists. That was, however, until his latest album, Flower Boy. The 2017 album was the binary opposite of what we had become associated with. The hard bass heavy beats had been replaced with soft melodic ones. The album is considered to be Tyler's coming to terms with his own sexuality. Throughout the album there are subtle and some not so subtle hints. Tyler subverted all previous connotations of him in this album. He discusses how he was scared of losing fans, but amazingly it's transformed him into more of an icon increasing his popularity. By going back and re-dissecting his older lyrics, critics and listeners alike now view his apparent homophobia as frustrations regarding his own sexuality. If Tyler has come out, then does that remove the old hate speech label that critics gave him, or does it mean that he is using the idea of sexuality to manipulate audiences? Overall, music is going to forever challenge political correctness as it is an art form that requires complete creative freedom that cannot be censored. Grand Theft Auto is well known for his video game violence and the outrage it has caused as well as being one of the most popular video game franchises in the world. There are a number of GTA games and I have seen all of the various things you can do within the GTA world which involves things like robbing people, stealing cars, bank heists, and recently in GTA 5 there was a mission where you play as one of the main characters called Trevor and you have to try to get information from him and you have to use tools like pliers to pull out his teeth, jump cables to electrify him, a uh, wrench to break his kneecaps and when he passes out adrenaline to wake him back up. This mission in the game has caused a lot of controversy and tested political correctness within this video game franchise. There was an article in the Telegraph and it's titled Grand Theft Auto 5 is designed to deliberately degrade women. I believe this is due to the use of accessible strip clubs and prostitution within the game, which shows that GTA is the opposite of political correctness and this is what they designed the game to be. And that's one of the reasons why it's so popular. The game glamorizes real crime and lets the user get away with something you couldn't do in real life with minimal consequences. But then again, there have been arguments with GTA, instead of helping releasing anger, it causes violence for its political incorrectness as on the release of GTA 5, a man was murdered just so the killer could get his copy of GTA 5. The next video game I'm going to talk about is Battlefield 5. As this game gets the opposite attention from their audience compared to GTA. Because when the new trailer was released, it involved a female soldier as the main focus of the trailer. As well as their uniforms being more steampunk than official, as well as the character having a metal claw as a hand. This caused a lot of uproar within the Battlefield community as they were complaining it's too politically correct and the fans saying not historically accurate because of the woman being on the front lines. This led to the executive vice president of EA to leave just before launch. Finally there is a video game called JFK Reloaded which takes the cake for the least politically correct video game I have ever seen. As the aim of the game is to try and most accurately reenact the JFK assassination. When buying the game, it gives you the option to pay from $10 to $50. This gives you tokens that enters into a competition. And the competition being who could most accurately reenact the assassination and the winner to get $100,000. After this competition came to the light, JFK's brother Ted Kennedy sought out to have this game taken down and begin a lawsuit. 